My name is Aaron. This is my good friend Josh. Hello. And what we plan to do for each episode of this brand spanking new YouTube review show is we're going to pull an album out of my collection. We're going to listen to it and kind of give you our opinions about it. So before we get to the album that we're going to listen to, I wanted to... I wanted to kind of give everybody maybe a little more insight into our perspective, where we're coming from about music. Yeah, why we're doing yeah, this. Yeah, why we even do this in the first place. So, so Josh, uh, how would you describe my musical tastes? Well, it's very wide. You like to listen to a bit of everything. Uh, you're also kind of mainstream. you are got the finger on the pulse as it is you oh, know it's good and bad i don't know about how close it is to the <laughs> pulse but uh well it's it's at least alive <laughs> the, the, yeah yeah so like you know a lot about music and know the, some of the trends and whatnot so but a, a variety of music i you, yeah you do I, I do listen i mean i do listen to a lot of stuff i think like everybody i do have my own tastes i have things that i like and i yeah. dislike but i i do kind of pride myself on being eclectic in in what i listen yes. to yes and I can say, Josh, you are pretty much the polar opposite of that. Uh, <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> not not through any distaste of music itself. You no. just never just ne it was just something that you never uh, really got into. Like you, I know it's not like you don't listen to music. I know you do listen to music. Uh, yeah. You listen to stuff that you might hear on the radio every now and then. Uh, I know that you like maybe up ten years behind. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> that new Lady Gaga sure is something. <laughs> and I know that you do have an appreciation for a nice movie soundtrack oh, yeah. or a, you know a, a musical score, mm -hmm. and you have a familiarity with classical music. Uh, yeah, I mean you wouldn't call yourself uh, an expert, but you know you know the timeless pieces, some you know the biggest the big hits, as it were. <laughs> I also know that. Your main window, your main entry into music as a whole, really comes from a single musician. Yes, and, and that would be Weird Al Yankovic. Yes, uh, you pretty much. He, he's. Would you say? I know. Obviously, he's not the only musician you listen to, but he's the only musician that you would consider yourself like a really big fan of. I would consider like a fan of Al. Yes, yeah, Weird yeah, Al. yeah, yeah. You're you're a super fan. There's of one Al. or two others, but like. Weird Al, I'm I'm right there. Mm -hmm. It's and I like Weird Al too. I yes, like him quite yeah. a bit, actually. It was, I mean, we've known each other for a long time. And, yeah. And as kids, that was one of the things that we could kind of form connect a, with, form a friendship over. Is yeah, our yeah. mutual appreciation of Weird Al Yankovic. And uh, but I mean, for you, I would say, or I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, Weird Al really is the uh, your kind of only reference point to a lot of the music that he's parodying like you're not actually familiar with a lot of the parodies uh that he does you just you just like his style and his, right. his comedy and just his overall just everything about him oh yeah yeah because you're weird i am <laughs> that's okay but so not I. I. i'm josh no you're weird josh <laughs> yeah. and we're not weird gonna Aaron. we're not gonna spend this whole episode talking about weird al maybe on a maybe in a future episode uh but i just wanted to give everybody kind of a, a sense of where we're coming from so uh you, you're not really that like into music, but you just started collecting music about a month ago. Uh, why don't you tell us the story of uh, how that happened? So it actually has to do with Weird Al as well. <laughs> um, he just had that big collection in the accordion where it's all of his singles from uh, Weird Al in 3D mm -hmm. to Polka Party to yeah, the whole like, hat, box set uh, mandatory fun yeah. everything plus his medium rarities new stuff so I was like oh, new Weird Al I have to have these songs I've never heard before <laughs> like his Jurassic Park version or his Japanese version of Jurassic Park I haven't heard that it's pretty amazing <laughs> So anyway, I'm ordering it, and I actually clicked the wrong button. Instead of ordering the CDs, I order all of the vinyl. <laughs> so now I have his entire collection on vinyl with no record player. Yeah. So subsequently, like, well, I'll buy a record player, uh -huh. and it just started like collecting after that. So now you officially, you accidentally uh, out a vinyl collector, and yes. now that you have some vinyl and that you have a turntable, I can why, listen to. Why it. not? Get maybe a few more records. I mean, exactly. why not? You know, you're yeah. hooked. You're you're in. It's pretty cool. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dig an album out of my collection, and I'm okay. gonna introduce it to you. And uh, it's probably most likely something that you've never heard before. And I just kind of want to open you up to 
uh, a larger the larger world of music that's yeah. out there and specifically then, through vinyl right. collecting and we'll decide if it's you know one of those records where everybody should rush out there and get it right. if you listen to it great or just kind of leave it in is the, it, the discount is it something bin. that ne- needs to be in everybody's collection or right. is it just you know should i add it to my collection exactly basically this this is really just a should josh go out and find this record <laughs> that i'm going to make him listen to but before we start i do want to go ahead and give you an album josh that Ooh, i think i think no record collection should be without okay. and of course that is herb albert and the tijuana brass oh thanks <laughs> You know, I've never listened to it, but I was looking through my grandparents' records the other day, and they actually have two of these. <laughs> so, yeah, I do. Well, think no, no record collection should be without Herb Albert and the Tijuana Brass. Okay. If you've ever gone to a thrift store or a record store looking for cheap vinyl, you're almost guaranteed to find Herb Albert and the Tijuana Brass. The guy sold a lot of records back in the '60s. Gotcha. Cool. So, now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and listen to the record that we're going to listen to today, and it is not the Beatles, it Aww. is Songs for a Mormon Child. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah, this... Um, quick note. Yes. I am not a Mormon, nor a child, <laughs> nor are you. Neither am I, no. We're okay. not Mormons, but, but we are uh, sheltered hicks from the midwest uh sure that's not quite the same but uh maybe we'll find some common ground there all in all in good fun all in good fun of course uh, now i picked up interested i picked up this little beauty at a thrift store for one dollar and one dollar one dollar it was definitely worth the dollar that i paid for it i mean look at that cover those that is some white white kids white blondies holy cow I think that's my grandparents fireplace <laughs> that's amazing yeah so this record came out in the mid 70s and it's uh, made by mormons for mormons uh written to teach or reinforce the principles of the gospel to children yep so it's kind of wow. um uh, what what would you call that like uh Propaganda? No, I didn't want to go <laughs> directly to propaganda. Sorry, uh, a, a teaching tool. A teaching tool, yeah. Yes. It's something to, you know, like, I mean, like they said, on it reinforces their values and, and culture that they okay. want for their kids. So after we listen to this, we're not going to become Mormon, are we? I, I, I mean, guess that depends on how good of a record it is. I mean, there was those hypnotic, like, <laughs> parents telling you, careful with those vinyl. Okay, yeah, if we play it backwards, you might become a Mormon. Okay, well, we won't play it backwards. <laughs> we won't play it backwards. All right. He's got some amazing songs. I'm a Mormon. <laughs> I want to be a mom, a mother. That's that was, my favorite track. I would have thought. <laughs> yeah. Not, I got not it. for personal reasons. <laughs> Look at the baby. You got to see the baby. Um, yeah, I sometimes I get a feeling inside. <laughs> that is vague and unnerving, but uh, hey, maybe that's the breakout hit. Maybe. We'll, well see. Cool. Well, let's uh, put it on the turntable and give it a listen and see what we think. Sounds good. I'm a Mormon. Yes, I am. (laughs) So if you want to study a Mormon, I'm a living specimen. Maybe you think I'm just like anybody. Nice little Mormon march. Yes, yes. yes. I'm a Mormon. So this, this is pretty through. great. Yeah. And if you think that I'm peculiar in the things I say and do, remember I know the rules, the do's and don'ts for happy, happy living. I learned to say I will or won't. I try to be forgiving. Maybe you'd like me to tell you about the things that I know are true. Then you can be a Mormon too. At least all these songs are short. Yes. Yes. Sixteen of them. But they're short. Won't yeah. somebody come and play with me? It's like a smooth know RB singing from the 70s. Yeah. Exactly. 
I feel like what's bothering me is I can hear this music and it would sound so much better if like Karen Carpenter was singing. This is such a sunny day. <laughs> the Carpenters. Okay. This is why we're doing this show. Yeah. Why do birds? Yeah, I've heard this one. Okay. That makes sense now. Do you wanna feel happy? Ooh, here you do go. you wanna feel joyful? Here's that Karen Carpenter I was missing. <laughs> Got a theory. For somebody else. That's what Jesus did. Don't be afraid, it won't hurt you to try it. Do something nice for somebody else. That's the way to live happy, joyful, gladly. It you know, as, as strange as that chorus is, grand, you have to admit it's a little catchy. Do. Sure, I kind of like this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not bad. Well, it's not inherently it's just, the message is pure. Yeah, it's yeah. Be a good person. Be nice to others. Yeah. 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 That's the album. Whew. Well, we made it through all of the songs for a Mormon child. Possibly one that wasn't for a Mormon <laughs> child. Right. The jury's still out on that one. Oh, man. Yeah. What a glorious album. Wow. <laughs> so, Josh, I mean, do you feel maybe just a little bit more Mormon now? I guess if, I mean, I'm... If I tell a lie, I'm going to die. <laughs> You'll want um, to die. I want to die. Uh, so, one thing that I noticed listening to that album, yeah, um, it it was a lot of it was really subtle. Like there was not, there was not a lot of like overt Mormonism stuff in there. There was a few things about Jesus, and then you have you know you have like the it was something you could play at like Sunday school. Yeah, yeah. It, it was something nice. Um, kind of establishing the foundation right yeah just don't tell a lie be a good person sundays are fun days babies talk to angels babies talk to angels <laughs> learn hang how to out spell with the, learn how to spell hang out with the family family with game family. night but like i don't like i like kind of like what i was alluding to with like that those last couple of songs there what was that one uh um, so that was the one we're referring to is uh the outside of you, where uh, that's the one he's talking yeah, about. Like, that's I love the shape of your nose. <laughs> is so lovely it curls just right it bounces and shines when it catches the light your eyes are so sparkly your skin seems to glow your smile is as pretty as any i know your teeth are as dazzlingly white as can be The tilt of your nose is delightful to see You're a beautiful person without any doubt I hope you're as beautiful inside as out for what you are deep inside, I cannot view. 
So I'll hope it's as lovely as the outside of you. He's like the pickup guy. <laughs> sister wives. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I, there, there's, there was just like, some, like tonally, the album has some like weird soul things. Yeah, it, you like know. for the most part, it's kind of fun. I would say, honestly, my, for me, my personal favorite was uh, "I Know the Prophets" because it sounded like <laughs> one of the Oompa Loompa songs from Willy Wonka. It did, yeah. <laughs> the old testament there although uh, did i hear nephite in there yeah is that uh i don't know i'm not i'm not up on my uh i don't know the prophets obviously uh, clearly we don't know the prophets <laughs> i think we'll have to listen to that one a couple times yeah we have to go to the wormhole and ask the prophets what did you think about the album josh i know i know you had to like some of it i mean i like it's it's all it's interesting it's it's interesting it's all pretty innocent i think most it's of it's very pretty inter- innocent. innocent um for the most part, there are some subtle kind of, you know, make sure this is what you should do, like tithe and give oh, yeah. a dime to my pocket. Yeah, the song about tithing. You can tell this is last year at the Tabernacle Boys Choir. It's really straining. This is, this is a song about tithing. It is a song about tithing. Because <laughs> he's got nine pennies to spend. <laughs> I was like, okay. Like he's got a dime in his pocket. Oh, I, I want to be a mommy. Now that's that's a classic. That's, that's just like straight up six kids. Mormon girls. When yep. you grow up, you're going to have six kids. So yeah. just get prepared. At least this one's not a march. Yes. <laughs> Man, they're shooting their money for those five I want flutes. To be a mother and have a family. <laughs> One little, two little, three little babies of my own. <sighs> yeah, like we were talking about, that that one is definitely like the outside of you. It's that's yeah. different from all the it's, rest. It, it felt it felt different. Like yes. like it felt really. Like it wasn't like upbeat and cheerful the way all the other songs are. Like that it was one was almost like a lullaby, almost. But it felt even more like creepy. Creepy. <laughs> it just felt creepy. So yeah. If I saw this in a dollar bin, I might pick it up just so I could say, "Hey, yeah. listen to this." Yeah, to pull it out for parties. And right stuff. to yeah. parties. I I would agree. I would say that if you see this record in a dollar bin, buy it. You know, absolutely. It's, I mean, it's almost worth it just for the cover alone. Like that, just, I mean, what a great visual that is. Yeah. Uh, uh, but, but yeah, I think it's, it's the kind of thing that you could pull out and get a little chuckle out of. Granted, we're not the intended audience. Obviously not. But, um, 
I think that does it for this episode. Case uh, closed case for the cl- song when we're a child. Pick it up, you find it. Oh, see the baby again with the baby. Oh, she smiles rather strangely and stares at the scars. I know she's not looking at me. Do you think she is smiling at angels hovering ever so play with angels before the it was born. The suggestion that the baby was in heaven playing with angels and then was born and was separated and now they're lonely. and It's an interesting like theological concept. Like, 